everybody knows there's a great premium on leadership. Yeah. We also know that leadership is very difficult. Uh -huh. right. Even in the world, if the team don't win, they'll fire the coach. Well, son. If a corporation begins to fail, they'll fire the president. Right. Mm -hmm. And in our churches these days, if the church is not growing, they'll fire a pastor. Mm -hmm. yes, There's a tremendous need for capable, enthusiastic, inspiring, influential, and spiritual leadership. Yes, sir. Right. The leadership in our, in our nation is just a small crisis compared to the leadership matters in the church. Uh -huh. yes, sir. See, the world is just for temporary. Right. But when you have a spiritual dearth in the church, that affects eternal consequences. Yes, my, my, my. So it's, it's a great, important matter, this thing of spiritual leadership. Uh -huh. All right. You're right. Matter of fact, the failures of leadership in the church seem to be common and almost epidemic. Mm. Well, I'm afraid more such failures fill our future. Mm. Well, well, as leaders go, so go the people. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. The New Testament tells us to follow those who are over us in faith and pattern our lives after them. That's right. right. That's right. You ever notice in Israel, whenever they had a bad king, the people right. were evil. Right. 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 When they had a good king, yes, right. the people were prosperous right. and they were good. Yes, sir. So as the people, as the leaders go, so go the people. Ah. And you know, as we look in the New Testament, we see that God is saying he wants us to follow after leadership. Is that the same thing for us to do? I mean, especially with all these scandals and the lives of a lot of these popular and, you know, these uh, celebrity pastors. It is really important to have godly leaders in the church. God has established in the human realm the need for leadership. Yes, sir. Yeah. Even in the first marriage between Adam Hello, and Eve, God established Adam right. as the leader. Yes, That's right. They were equal. Right. They were joint heirs, That's right. That's right. but for order's sake, yes, sir. for functionality's yes, sake, sir. God chose Adam. Right. Yes, sir. Oh, I know I can't get no help. Yeah. Yeah. God chose Adam.
responsibility is to oversee the church, right. including the rebuke of the disobedient, the strengthening of the faith. Their responsibility is to train and appoint teachers and workers to aid him in building up the body. He has to offer biblical counsel. He has to preach, yes, teach, yes. baptize, marry, yes. and bury, visit yes. the sick, encourage the discouraged, yes. visit those who are incarcerated, raise his own family, and love his wife. Yes. Who is qualified yes. for such a task? Yes. Who can discharge such an immense responsibility effectively? Yes. Yet God has delegated that great responsibility to fallen and fallible men, right? Mm -hmm. Even Paul realized he wasn't adequate. Right. And now y'all know Paul was a great man. Yes, sir. He yes. had the call of God on his life. Yeah. He had been set apart and ordained. Mm -hmm. He had been given the responsibility and care of all the churches, yeah. right. which was the great, greatest burden he even carried. Uh -huh. He was called to preach, to teach, to lead. He was called to set an example to others right. so that they could follow him. But he, too, found himself struggling with the flux. Right. right. He said, you know, the things I would like to do, yeah, yeah. I find myself doing. The things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. And the things I don't want to do, right. I find myself doing. Right. In other words, he was conflicted in his flux. Right. You know, the flux should trip you up. Come on, son. And all of us have it. Yeah. So you can't look at your pastor and say, oh, that's a perfect man. Right. But when you see a flaw, y'all to pray for him. Right. And y'all to cover him up <laughs> instead of trying to look for a flaw. Because see, you got people in the congregation looking, and they want to find one flaw. Right. Did he say shirt or did he say something else? <laughs> and if he slip on the tongue, they want to find a flaw. Yeah. But you better remember, he's fallible. Come on, son. But he's got a tremendous responsibility. Come on, son. The tone of Paul's words here seem political. It sounds like a defense. Someone was attacking his integrity, and someone or some group was attacking Paul's sincerity. They were doing everything to destroy the confidence of the people in Thessalonica about the one who helped start the church. Right. Here was Paul, Silas, and Timothy coming into Thessalonica with all of these pagan people starting the church. Right. Right. Paul had a lot of detractors like right. the Jews right. who were, the, you know, the Judaizers, and then you had some Gentiles who was enemies of the gospel. Right. Yeah. Now, in that day, the world was full of phony spiritual leaders. Right. Right. There were the Oriental mysteries, the Greek philosophies, the local godlings, the popular philosophers, the magicians and the astrologers. Everybody sought to win new converts right. over to their beliefs. That's right. And see, there was a tremendous amount of charlatanism. Yeah. And it would be easy for these accusers to just throw Paul in with all the rest of the phonies, right. calling him the phonies just like all the rest of the phonies in the world. Okay. So the attack was against Paul's integrity and his sincerity. Yes. Now, it was, an, it was an effort to make the Thessalonian church believe that, you know, Paul is just like the rest of these phonies. Right. He's just like the rest of these charlatans. So Paul had to answer his critics in this text. Mm -hmm. Now he calls them to remember their own experience. Mm -hmm. well, in verse 1 you say, you notice he says, you yourself know. In verse 2 he says, as you know. And in six times and 11 appeals, you will find that he kept saying, you know what I did firsthand. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You have firsthand information about my ministry. Right. Right. I was with you. Right. I was in the midst of oh, you know for yourself. Right, right. You don't need secondhand uh, uh, information. Right. All you got to do is remember, and that should dispel any accusations about my character. Oh, right. By the way, you've been knowing this man 22 years. Right. You ought to put that before tell you about your past. Let somebody talk about your past. about my past. That's my past. You ought to protect your past. 
process of calling him to remember, he ministered, he touches on some principles that made his ministry effective. Mm -hmm. He yes. caused them to recall the effectiveness of his ministry. He yep. says, for you yourselves, brethren, know that our coming to you was not in vain. That's in right. other words, when we came, it wasn't useless. Right. It wasn't futile. It right. wasn't empty. In other words, you have uh, evidence-based practices. Yes, sir. You have, you have empirical evidence right. of what happened. Uh -huh. You know, if you look at chapter 1, it says he called them the church at Thessalonica. Uh -huh. In other words, when he went to this pagan church, he preached the gospel and people became converted. Right, right. Then he says, you are the elect of God. Right. Mm -hmm. He says, now people know your labor of faith. That's he right. know your labor of love and the hope of your call. Right. Yeah. Everybody in the area kind of know what you guys are talking about. Matter of fact, your faith is being resounded throughout the cheer. Yeah. People are hearing about you evangelizing right, right. the whole region. And the Bible says that those people said they turned from idols yes, sir. Right. to the living God. Right. Right. So in other words, our coming to you wasn't in vain. Right. We had some converts. Right. We started a whole new church. Yeah. So you know how effective our ministry is. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Why was Paul's ministry so dynamic? Well, for one, they had confidence in God's power. Yes, sir. You will notice it said, but after we had already suffered and been mistreated in right. Philippi, as you know, uh -huh. we had the boldness in our God yeah, right. to speak to you the gospel of God amid much yeah. opposition. Yes, right. Right. It was Paul and Silas coming from Philippi. Uh -huh. In Philippi, all they did was preach the gospel. Yeah, A girl had the devil cast out of her. Right. Right? Yeah. And her, her owners got so mad, they lied about Paul. Right. Right. Falsely accused Paul and Silas. Yeah. Had them beat. Right. Had them not only beat many times with rods, put in the inner prison. Right. Right. Had their hands and feet locked in stocks in a dungeon where there is filth, where there is urine, the smell of fecal matter, right, right. and then they had no lights, back exposed to rats and all of these different insects right, crawling around, and Paul and them singing praise. Saying, <laughs> God, I thank you. God bless you, man. And the Bible says, at midnight, there was a quaking and a shaking. At midnight, God opened up the door. Yes, it seems like the people would have been saying, Lord, oh, we get uh, grateful. Yeah. Thankful that God delivered. Yeah. But every time you do something for the Lord, everybody not going to be with you. Right. Every time you do a great work, somebody going to have a critic. Oh, you God. always have a critic. Yeah. Somebody said, oh, he ain't got Come on, son. Oh, yeah, I know him back when. Come on, son. Right, right, right. Or you preach it. So he comes. Three days later, back still sore, he's still hurting, he come to Thessalonica, and he get the same conflict. Yeah, right. But you know what I found out? When you really preach the gospel, you're going to have opposition. Yeah. I found that out. You know, you can soft pedal it, and you're going to get no kind of conflict. But Paul and Timothy and Silas were publicly humiliated. Right. And physically in pain just for preaching the gospel. Yeah. So Paul said, we already been mistreated. Right. And we, you know, now if you'll notice, they didn't say, you know what? Since we was mistreated in Philippi, maybe we need to get a better strategy. Well, maybe we need to change up. Huh. Or no, no, better yet, let us change our methods. Hello, let us change our message. You know, so many people changing the message sir, today. Yes, they don't want to yes, preach sir. against sin and Satan. Yes, but they don't want to yes, confront an ungodly yes, culture. Yes, what they want to do is preach that old Osteen right, 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 right. Y'all don't know that's the Osteen theology. Right. Right. All, all of that positive right. thinking right. stuff. Right. Oh, yeah, you just a good boy. And on, just son. keep on believing and keep on going. He's not going to confront your sin. He's not going to tell you that you're wrong. He's just going to let you stay in your wrong and tell you to keep on going. 
of sin, right. the seed of sin, right. and to confront the fatal condition of unredeemed humanity, yeah. and then offer the cure of yes. their righteousness yes. with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You can be yeah. saved. Yeah. You can be delivered. Yeah. You don't have to stay in sin. Yeah. You don't have to stay an addict. Yeah. You don't have to stay a whore. You don't oh. have to be a drug dealer. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to stay in sin. Stop! Oh, stop later. Right. When I say stop, I mean stop. Come on, 
in that day, God, they did have a lot of religions well, that actually worshiped with prostitutes, yes, right? temple prostitutes. Yes, yes, the holy men of God, a lot of ladies went to them because they figured if they had sex with the holy right. man of God, right. they were getting closer to God. Yes, well, right. So they were actually, that's why all those false religions were attractive. Right. Paul, they was accusing Paul of being this. Paul said, man, I, my ministry not impure. I'm, I'm sexually on, pure. There's a whole lot of men can't say that come in their on, ministry. Well, but on, see, Pastor up. Lindsay is free come on, son. from sexual impurity. He's not chasing out the old lady oh, right, in son. greater Bible way. By the fact that you know anything about this man, he loves that woman. Come on, he's not where 
siege. God knows you. Don't worry about what people say. You got to be accountable to God. Don't try to please me. Stop when people get in trouble trying to please me. Don't try to please me and try to please God. Don't worry about if everybody mad at you. Preach. No matter if you have your family mad at you. Preach. All right.